Hello, everyone. My name is Hong Harry Pham. I'm currently an undergraduate researcher in the Department of Food Science. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, protein denaturation, protein mobility, and textural changes of Atlantic salmon during thermal processing. And so in recent years, there has been increasing demand for plant-based meat alternatives that look, taste, and cook like actual animal-based meat. However, there's still a lack of quantitative standardized methods to characterize um, you know, their physiochemical properties and structure functional relationship uh, before and after cooking. So in this study, we focused on developing a framework of quantitatively measurements of quantitative measurements to facilitate um, the creation of plant-based fish products using salmon as our model. So our approach is first to characterize the molecular physiochemical profile of the salmon tissues under temperature ramping conditions. And um, this includes uh, protein denaturation and investigating their enthalpy change using differential scanning colorimetry. Uh, protein mobility um, using diffusive waste spectroscopy and their viscoelastic properties using dynamic bulk shear rheology. And so the second um, part is to experimentally conduct cooking prototypes and to use product development tools to measure um, different parameters before and after cooking. And so that includes um, colorimetry, colorimetry um, cook loss, which is the amount of um, change in weight, uh, surface area shrinkage, and finally, uh, texture profile analysis that mimics a two compression, um, you know, bite, um, a bite test. And so for the results in discussion, so on figure one is our differential scanning colorimetry profile with the x-axis as the temperature, whereas the y-axis shows the heat flow. And um, we can clearly see two distinct peaks in the um, raw salmon. So this is our first run shown in the blue line. And we can see two distinct peaks. The first one is around 40 degrees C that can be attributed to myosin and collagen. Um, whereas the 72 degrees C peak, which can be attributed to the actin denaturation. Um, and so we can see that for the second run shown on the green line, um, there's no enthalpy change, meaning that um, the heat denaturation has been complete for um, these two major structural proteins regions. However, we can also see um, a slight reversible thermal transition at a higher temperature. And this um, many other papers or studies have indicated that this is because um, actin, uh, which is a very heat resistant proteins, they have heat shock proteins that protect them from fully unfolding. So um, that means that a lot of these residual um, enthalpy from the actin can be seen at this very high temperature at above um, 80 degrees C. So moving on to our figure two, which is a diffusive waste spectroscopy. So DWS is a non-invasive light scattering, similarly to DLS, that can be utilized to characterize the phase transition in our food samples. Um, and so D D DWS measures the molecular uh, colloidal mobility, whereas DSC, as we um, discussed previously measures the enthalpy change or the heat flow into the sample. So as you can see on the DWS, there is a large uh, phase transition, and this is spe gelation specific, um, large phase transition at, you know, after four degrees C, um, which is, can be attributed to the unfolding out of 40 degrees C by the myosin and collagen. Whereas we can also see a large um, phase transition at 80 degrees C, uh, which is can be attributed to the second um, unfolding peaks in DSC. Um, however, interestingly, we can also see a lot of other phase transition events, such as around 30 degrees C, around 50, 60 degrees C that are not seen in the DSC. And um, this is because of DS DWS measures, you know, other molecular events such as aggregation and protein-protein interactions um, that are not seen in D DSC. So we know that you know, when protein unfold, they expose a lot of these hydrophobic patches 
um, that can spontaneously associate them with each other and generate large aggregation. Um, and because of that aggregation events, um, DWS can probe that molecular uh, mobile um, proteins um, particles that can collide with each other. So there's other molecular events um, at different temperatures as well. Moving on, which is our rheology. So we know that cells embedded in the tissues um, in the extracellular matrix that has a viscoelastic property, meaning that it has a viscous, which behaves like a fluid, and an elastic property, which behaves as a, a solid. So one of the first step is to perform a dynamic strain swip test to determine the linear uh, viscoelastic region. And this is the region where the, um, the sample, uh, the structural integrity is not altered by the test condition, or in other words, we can determine the linear association between stress and strain um, in this region. So we perform um, strain sweep tests from 0.1% to up to 100% strain. And we did uh, that for two temperature, 30 degrees C, which is our starting temperature for our later experiment, and 90 degrees C, which is our ending um, temperature. As we can see that um, there's a plateau for both the 30 and 90 um, up to around 10. Um, and then it decreases um, the G prime, which means the um, elastic modulus, which is representing the solid property of the, <clears throat> the salmon, decreases with increasing strain. That makes sense because with increasing strain that breaks down a lot of the network um, within the salmon prop, uh, the salmon tissues. And so um, from this uh, strain sweep test, we can determine the linear viscoelastic uh, region. And we determined that to be 1% uh, strain, which is our critical strain limit, uh, as well as we perform this with a constant frequency, which is one hertz. <clears throat> In figure two is a um, storage modulus measurement from 30 to 90 degrees C. As we can see, there's a dramatic drop of um, G prime. This is because of the softening of the, um, of the myosin tail network. And if we look back to a DSC, there's a large increase of that unfolding event as well as um, mobility of the protein in a very compact environment. And so this softening, um, is due to a lot of previous studies have shown that because of certain proteol proteolytic enzymes that um, you know chops up the proteins and make them more mo mobile in the matrix, or because of a um, helix to coil transition um, in a lot of these myosin and collagen um, proteins. So th that softening, um, and then after. 45 up to around 80, there's a large deep increase in the G prime. This is because of um, protein unfolding and there's an increase of attractive forces of the hydrophobic regions of the proteins that make that association much very favorable um, as well as, you know, um, disulfide bond linkage, that means cross linkage. Um, within the matrix that increases the gel strength uh, over um, the temperature range. So moving on, which is our table one, so the TPA analysis. And so as you can see, we um, the hardness um, increases with increasing temperature. Cohesion, there's not a significant change, um, as we can see denoting by our significance um, test. Same thing for sponginess, and for chewiness, there's a increase, as we can see for A, B, and C, there's an increase in, um, in the chewiness for increasing temperature. For the color, um, we know that as we cook our salmon, uh, protein aggregates, and then that scatter light strongly. So that means that the L, which stands for lightness, should increase over time. And so we can see that there's an increase of that. For the redness and yellowness, because of that lightness um, and because of the denaturation of small molecules such as heme, lutein, and astaxanthin, um, the, there's a decrease in the A, which stands for redness, and B stands for yellowness. 
And finally, uh, figure five shows the cook loss with increasing temperature. So we know that increasing temperature means the water will evaporate as well as the protein concentrates more in the sample. And so that would reduce the pore size due to the capillary effect um, and water evaporates more. And so um, as you increase in the cooking temperature, there's a larger increase um, in the cook loss or the weight loss comparing to the initial raw sample. And same thing for surface area, uh, we would expect that um, there's an increase of that. However, after, for both of these, as you can see, denoted by the B uh, significance test, um, the 40, after 46.1, um, there's not much of that significant cook loss or significant surface area shrinkage. So that's a very interesting um, study uh, or interesting observation that we uh, conduct, that we um, analyzed. So, so these are some of the conclusion points. And um, again, our study has established a potential framework for um, combining molecular profile characterization using a lot of physical um, tools, as well as product development tools, as you can see on this panel, um, to facilitate the creation of plant-based foods, and this is specifically plant-based fish using salmon as our model. Thank you for listening.